Genesis chapter 1 verses 1 to 19. In the beginning God created the heavens and the earth. Now the earth was a formless void. There was darkness over the deep and God's spirit hovered over the water. God said, Let there be light and there was light. God saw that light was good and God divided light from darkness. God called light day, and darkness he called night. Evening came, and morning came, the first day. God said, Let there be a vault in the waters to divide the waters in two. And so it was. God made the vault, and it divided the waters above the vault from the waters under the vault. God called the vault heaven. Evening came <coughs> and morning came the second day. <coughs> God said, Let the waters under heaven come together into a single mass and let dry land appear. And so it was. God called the dry land earth and the mass of waters seas and God saw that it was good. God said, let the earth produce vegetation, seed-bearing plants, and fruit trees bearing fruit with their seed inside on the earth. And so it was. The earth produced vegetation, plants bearing seed in their several kinds, and trees bearing fruit with their seed inside in their several kinds. God saw that it was good. Evening came and morning came the third day. God said, Let there be lights in the vault of heaven to divide day from night, and let them indicate festivals, days and years. Let them, let them be lights in the vault of heaven and sh to shine on the earth. And so it was. God made two great lights, the greater light to govern the, air, the day, the smaller light to govern the night, and the stars. God set them in the vault of heaven to shine on the earth, to govern the day and the night, and to divide light from darkness. God saw that it was good. Evening came. And morning came the fourth day. God said, Let the waters teem with living creatures, and let birds fly above the earth within the vault of heaven. And so it was. God created great sea serpents and every kind of living creature with which the waters teem, and every kind of winged creature god saw that it was good god blessed them saying be fruitful multiply and fill the waters of the seas and let the birds multiply upon the earth evening came and morning came the fifth day god said let the water produce every kind of living creature cattle reptiles and every kind of wild beast and so it was God made every kind of wild beast, every kind of cattle, and every kind of land reptile. God saw that it was good. God said, Let us make man in our own image, in the likeness of ourselves, and let them be masters of the fish of the sea, the birds of heaven, the cattle, all the wild beasts, and all the reptiles that crawl upon the earth. God created man in his image, in the image of himself. In the image of God, he created him. Male and female, he created them. God blessed them, saying to them, Be fruitful, multiply, fill the earth and conquer it. Be masters of the fish of the sea, the birds of heaven and all living animals on the earth. God said, See, I give you all the seed-bearing plants, that are upon the whole earth, and all the trees with seed-bearing fruit. This shall be your food. To all wild beasts, 
all birds of heaven and all living reptiles on the earth. I give all the foliage of plants for food. And so it was. God saw all he had made, and indeed it was very good. Evening came, and morning came, the sixth day. Thus heaven and earth were completed with all this with all their array. On the seventh day God completed the work he had been doing. He rested on the seventh day after all the work he had been doing. God blessed the seventh day and made it holy because on that day he had rested after all his work of creating. Such were the origins of heaven and earth when they were created. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Pharisee, Mark 7, chapter 7, verses 1 to 13. The Pharisees and some of the scribes who had come from Jerusalem gathered round Jesus, and they noticed that some of his disciples were eating with unclean hands, <coughs> that is, without washing them. For the Pharisees and the Jews in general followed the tradition of the elders and never eat without washing their, ha their arms as far as the elbow. And on returning from the marketplace, they never eat without first sprinkling themselves. There are also many other observances which have been handed down to them concerning the washing of cups and pots and bronze dishes. So these Pharisees and scribes asked him, Why do your disciples not respect the tradition of the elders, but eat their food with unclean hands? He answered, It was of you hypocrites that Isaiah so rightly prophesied in this passage of scripture. This people honours me only with lip service, while their hearts are far from me. The worship they offer me is worthless. The doctrines they teach are only human regulations. You put aside the commandment of God to cling to human traditions. And he said to them, How ingeniously you get round the commandment of God in order to preserve your own tradition. For Moses said, do your duty to your father and your mother, and anyone who curses father or mother must put, be put to death. But you say, if a man says to his father or mother, anything I have that I might have used to help you in is korban, that is, dedicated to God, then he is forbidden from that moment to do anything for his father or mother. In this way you make God's word null and void for the sake of your tradition which you have handed down and you do many other things like this the word of the lord jesus commandment never wishes to destroy life but rather to preserve strengthen and heal life dietrich bonhoeffer 1906 to 1945